Hallo, willkommen zu der, zum Vortrag Solving Social Networking Problems Through Interconnectivity, die Probleme sozialer Netzwerke durch Interkonnektivität zu lösen von Stefan. Dieser Vortrag wird auf Deutsch übersetzt von Isegrim, Attila und Q. Feedback bitte äh, unter dem Hashtag C3Lingo auf Twitter oder Mastodon. Also... Ich hoffe, dass ihr alle einen sehr schönen RC3 haben wird. Äh, dieses Mal wieder komplett äh, remote. Und in diesem äh, Talk äh, begrüße ich unseren ersten Vortragenden Stefan von der Econet Foundation. Und er wird reden über das, die Probleme von sozialen Netzwerken zu lösen durch Inaktivität und wird uns erklären, wie wir, wie wir ähm, Botschaften, Texte austauschen können zwischen verschiedenen sozialen Netzwerken. Also Stefan, die, die Bühne gehört dir. Alles klar, vielen Dank. Hallo, alles ähm, klar, vielen Dank. So, äh, ich werde auf Deutsch präsentieren. Okay, so it turns out that the presentation oh, is ja, in German. Freude. So everybody ja, who would like to listen to the German version, please change the channel. So we are going to provide the, uh, the English presentation. So I'm very happy to be able to present the, uh, this uh, this text here and getting the spot here. I'm very happy to to uh, get the opportunity to tell about my research work here. And let's see how to, uh, what develops from that. And I hope that that's going to be a that's very informative uh, view. So the problem is solving uh, so social network problem to interactivity. This means solving means there are problems. And most of you are going to know this. This is there are several uh, negative uh, um, uh, safety uh, um, impact on on the nation. I'm going to uh, give some some detail, details later on. So we are. In our co communication, we're pretty uh, uh, we have here. We have an infrastructure um, which is blocking um, uh, blocking innovation, blocking self-determination. And I mean, just if I just uh, want to change from net one network to another and use something else, I'm cut off uh, the resources to do that. And it's difficult uh, uh, to interact with other people, with people in other networks. So what I noticed, it was what, what I really hate is the, the lack of alternatives here in the public debate. So the negative impact on our society there, but there are no, no one mentions any constructive solutions for that. So if I meet people and I work on this financialization federation, the the, uh, the first reaction you always is about ask my friends is why should Facebook want to do that? So there's uh, people don't really understand, don't really see why this is a problem, how this can be solved. So this is what my talk is about. So I want uh, uh, want everybody to get some hope for improvement here. So how things could go better. I want to show. Uh, uh, present some infrastructure that allows for innovation and um, self-determination and uh, present some alternatives here. So who are you? So I want to present who I am and what team is. So everything I'm presenting here in terms of research is a collaboration with Martin in the past two years. And in the past six months, um, the, real, the realization happens in a larger team uh, as shown here. It's, it's very, very exciting. Uh, working with quite a couple of people after having researched for so long. And so since September, we created the Iconnect Foundation, Iconnect for Interconnected Networks. So this is what uh, this is about. We, uh, um, we are an organization for, uh, to, um, uh, to found, uh, found research and for consumer protection. And our mission is to um, to found to uh, to spread interconnected uh, networks. And uh, so, why do we want to? Do we want to uh, we want to have a um, self-sufficient society with interconnected networks. 
ganz allgemein. So for the for the technique, so all of this, uh, all of our talk here is about digital uh, communication. So it can be decentral and central, centralized and decentralized. And we are looking at decentralized. So we have interoperability and interconnectivity as a main concept in decentralization. And so so we're going to look into what we mean with interconnectivity and interoperability. And uh, first one being, uh, being about um, the user side compatibility here. So this, that's what I'm going to present today. So first of all, what is what does digital communication mean for me? So this digital con uh, uh, communication can ha happen between different communication partners. So, so we, this could be uh, uh, messages, profiles, ca uh, calendar entries, blogs, anything. And the, 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 the shape, the form can be private, it can be asymmetric. So for example, if I am watching a YouTube video and thousands of people watch a video and give a comment there, add a comment there, then in some way I, I have communicated with this influencer even if the whole thing is very, very asymmetric, because for him, I'm just one of 5,000 commenters. There are also um, um, limited, uh, uh, limited uh, uh, ways of co communication. So, for example, I'm only getting a, a, um, a an alert for one one of every 10 message here, or maybe like like Tinder. So, where you can only get some get some message when you are have, actually have been matched, but not if a non-match is happening here. So, what is the digital communication from a technical uh, technical side? So, let's have a look at my slide here. So, the details are not that important, but what I wanted to show here is that, or what I want you to understand is that digital communication is just programs, applications uh, running on different uh, different devices, and in some ways they exchange data. And they they are relying on the that the other device um, sends the data in a certain format and processes data in a, in a certain way. So there are rules or protocols as we call them. And if some uh, one of the actors here doesn't stick to this uh, protocol, the whole communication doesn't work. So let's jump uh, jump indirectly. So why should the whole thing be uh, uh, decentral, in my opinion or in general opinion? So, very broadly speaking, I am convinced that solution need to come from the from from the groups from from the societies where these problems actually happen, so that the whole thing is not essentially essentially um, directed, uh, but the at the, exactly the place where people are experiencing some problems, some issues. Uh, that at that from that point where these uh, these problems happen, we find this uh, we uh, we find solution because this means that the solution is actually feasible, and that's why I think it's necessary that we um, have a society open for innovation and the infrastructure open for innovation and self determination here. So why isn't that possible with a centralized system as we have right now? So there's uh, what we call the network effect, which is that the use of a product is uh, for, a co for a consumer is depending on the number of total users here. So if I enter a, a social network without any user, the whole thing doesn't have any added value for me, the whole, the whole experience. And th as a reason is that um, uh, you are drawn to networks with lots of people already in there. So what uh, follows from that is that um, if I ch choose uh, uh, any any app, any application, any product, I don't choose just by my personal uh, preferences, but uh, uh, by 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 the, the amount of people there. So in the the most extreme case, I do not have any way to make a this decision about uh, for my own, and this is actually makes the whole system immune against actual innovation. This also means that in the centralized system, only people can can change change something who actually would profit from from these changes. And in my opinion, this is the reason why, in the past couple of years, 
there was not there were not too many uh, so, so many changes not not too many things changed there so there are a couple of people who would, would think about innovation and would have uh, would be interested in having, having that but they are not in a position to change these things uh, here so let's really jump to uh, to uh, uh, to innovation here um, ganz allgemein meine ich jetzt erstmal dass what do i mean by interconnectivity i mean that there are cross connections between different networks without these green lines if these networks are not connected it is uh, to connect endpoints what does it mean for social networks contacts can interact be uh, beyond their own networks the advantage is i can decide where i want to be and I can interact with all contacts and all communities independently. If these work, even if these work completely differently and if uh, they do different things. If people decide uh, to communicate with different technologies, they can still stay connected. What are the technical challenges? For one, is the reachability for the contacts beyond their personal technical network. The own network is already connected, but my messages should also reach other people. And the second is the execution of a functionality, which is not in uh, the own system. If I send a message that my, or if I receive a message that my own system isn't able to process, that it shouldn't matter for the personal communication. That this would be ideal if we could have interoperability, if everything would work. For one, we need a global addressing, address space that is working beyond all networks. We already know that from email. Email doesn't, it doesn't matter where you have your email server, it arrives properly. But with the second, because there's conflict pre-programmed, because a system should uh, execute functionality that it doesn't even possess. If you have these requirements, you automatically, that automatically means that the working the, with the functionality, it cannot really work in my own system. It has to be processed elsewhere. My user can't really, uh, has to, it has to be shown for the user so that they can interact with it. What follows from that, that the initiator of the communication has to set the format. If I upload a picture to my friends, then there's a different methods to interact with it. Oh, so more clearer this becomes with, uh, if you compare interoperability with intercompatibility. Interoperability is a synonym for decentrality. It just means that we have rules for how different systems can interact with each other. It's the classical decentralization. It's about to have protocols. I just uh, showed here the list from Wikipedia with active projects. Just to show that this is already being used. You should already use that. Yeah. Yeah. What are the limits of interoperability? The problem with it is, I want to talk about the problems. The first is different interoperabilities are not uh, compatible with each other. Interoperability works uh, so that different systems can work through protocols. But if different uh, systems have different rules, then you can't uh, interoperate those rules. But generally, so you could ask yourself, isn't it possible to have just a single interoperability that works for all uh, digital communications? So what would be if we would find such an interoperability? 
For one, you could say if you this, uh, if you this, uh, distinguish between a, this extendable interoperability and non extendable interoperability, if you have a standard that is already set and you can't change it, or if you can change a standard if you can add features, or you have uh, examples for both. Not extendable uh, interoperability is a challenge for innovation. It's not really tragic, but for example, the telephone has clear. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, clear protocols are not a bad thing. You can use your phone, and you know clearly if you call someone, it it arrives, and you know what's going to happen, and that's the point. It's critical with social networks. We we don't uh, because we as humans, I don't think we already know what the limits of social networks are. Because I've, uh, that's why I think that innovation in this sector is really important. We shouldn't uh, determine ourselves too early what we want. So what what happens with this extendability of interoperability? The different sources for uh, compatibility weaknesses. This is not just theoretical, but we also see the same practice between different systems that are already in use. For uh, for one. We have an ex uh, so if you say we have an extendable interoperability, if you have uh, in the uh, weaknesses in the applications, if they are not uh, too similar, if you, uh, they only use parts of the protocol, uh, but not all, but if uh, an application like uh, Mastodon, that's a clone of Twitter, if they use exchange contacts, and if another app uh, that's made for chess. Maybe a one protocol can exchange, uh, can ex allow exchanging, but if the applications don't uh, put to practice what, uh, what's uh, been discussed, then it doesn't work. If, you, if, we, if we think we have a global interoperability network, if this is being put to practice in different ways, this can cause problems. There's always weaknesses if you don't uh, uh, implement uh, interoperability. But if you go into detail, there's different data structures and different ways of doing things, and that's a uh, reality. So, and what's more is not all networks want to be in a, interoperable to begin with. There's closed networks that have a uh, an economic system to have their an interest to keep their data, and I also communicate uh, these that are just happy with the state of things. They don't want to become a mainstream. They're happy if they have their debate con culture, and they don't really want to be federated. There's also ways to solve this, but usually, if you Conclude. Uh, if uh, maybe we can get some uh, eventually get to perfect interoperability, but that's not the state right now. But there's also large chances in interconnectivity. All right. Uh, and now I want to talk about the uh, uh, clearly defining these terms. Interoperability, interconnectivity somehow also. Uh, falls into the realm of interoperability because those systems also interoperate. But it's it's good to differentiate in this way. So interoperability has the goal to reach as much compatibility as possible to have formants that can be used by uh, as many applications as possible. On the other side, with interconnectivity, you want to have uh, independent uh, functionality. So how does this look on the different levels? For interoperability, the upper two is, uh, and the interconnectivity is a lower two. On the left side, in general, we will look uh, at the top one at first. Interoperability is the control of um, communication and two applications, one in bright and one in dark green, um, are uh, 
are interpretable until display for the system and there are protocols for presentation in interconnectivity that's um, on the bottom left we don't have that problem we have general control and we can have a window where everything is displayed and we have a basic control for systems that are not interoperable which can become compatible by displaying the incoming data through the own interface where you can use the format of the bright green one where the data was coming from. So which one is the better one? Both have advantages and disadvantages. You can't say what's better, a hammer or a screwdriver. So if you don't use extendable interoperability, you have uh, obstacles for innovation. If you 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 might uh, don't get comments. So intercomment itself has also some uh, disadvantages here because the the format is uh, the is complete the protocol is completely decided by the sender. So um, so the data really can't can't really interpret it uh, uh, from that. So because there's no definition, uh, um, no agreed definition on how the data would look like. So this one I told already. So um, let's 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 uh, summarize this here. So interconnectivity helped everywhere with the the, the limits of interconnectivity are um, are interoperability are, are reached here. So for example, if we look at Alice and Bob, and they have different uh, uh, different demands to communication, their applications uh, it doesn't make sense for them to make the applications interoperable. But they still want to communicate on the on the other hand. So then you have interoperability um, can help where the limits or the borders of uh, interconnectivity are reached uh, here. So, so for example, uh, if I'm getting some in, invita invitation, it's very nice if it's shown to me. But for example, I, I want to I want to extract the data from that the the date, the time slot uh, there. So for this, I need the functionality um, here. So that's why. So, so I think what would work here, if interconnectivity and interoperability um, collaborate in a collaborate in a way that that interconnectivity gives us a a general compatibility of you of usage, and so the user can can uh, uh, run everything, show everything, and everywhere where this is po uh, possible. We're getting um, a compatibility in uh, in processing of uh, um, of data by interoperability. So, so, so uh, make use of the data the way the user wants that. So, if we have different applications, um, we connect it with interoperability. And so, in, in green here, we have the functionality um, being um, provided by interoperability. At last, the, that's the idea. How I could imagine this. So let's de now de uh, finally dive into how to uh, create create a, create a, create a product out of that. Um, so let let's uh, have a look back at the uh, at the the, um, um, the de demands to our to our network here. So uh, we want to be able to reach our contacts, uh, um, extending our uh, the technical network, and the other is. I want to uh, want to run a functionality not present in the own system. So the the user wants to uh, make use of all these functions, but the same needs to come with privacy um, uh, uh, security. So let's jump into it. What do we need as a, in terms of in, uh, infrastructure here? So at the end of the day, we need some app, some program, some application 
interacting with the with the uh, with the operation system. So, so let's have a look at this uh, graphic here, this figure here. So this can be a, a, a uh, an application with a fixed user experience, where the data come in all different kinds of format. This, can, for example, can be into, uh, all the stuff can be integrated in some feed that's that's shown to the user, or this is an application which just just uh, only shows um, what directly uh, uh, comes from the, from the servers here. So this is the application mode, and now we need need some kind of home component. Um, so um, so kind of inbox here that uh, gets all the messages from different servers either connected to an ex some existing network some some centralized or decentralized uh, network or or it could be some some some, some or the whole can, can completely decoupled from the servers and only running for my personal personal communication so we need communication partners here so so they they, they need the same uh, the, the same uh, infrastructure and what now comes then that to the communi communication partners again we are talking about Alice and Bob and if Bob is is using some and if he, uh, Bob uses some functionality which Alice system doesn't uh, doesn't come so Bob's communication needs some external module to uh, that helps um, uh, uh, bridging that gap and so if so the, the uh, Bob's home module uh, has uh, the Bob's home module has some uh, uh, info, uh, uh, internal capabilities and makes them available to the exterior world as well but um, this but the um, uh, not on fun functionally, but also data can be uh, made available externally. So, this is the infrastructure, and for this infrastructure, we we need in the simple case of uh, communication between between two partners. So we we fill this with with live. We we now look what do we need to um to uh, to implement all of that. So let's look at digital identities. So, so everybody has some information about themselves online, which they want to share with other with other people. So, uh, so in the home module, they they will they will be stored. So, so my my handy uh, would uh, would like to look up the um, my mobile phone would like to look up things that um, uh, or my contacts. And uh, which I want to share with other with with the other people. So, so I need the the addresses, the the addressability. So the the home module managing the inbox, it's uh, also needs to access to that. So, we need to have the possibility to have several addresses or multiple addresses per identity, and. So the uh, so I I would use the trackable uh, the tra trackability of myself, but again, uh, uh, bringing this into product can be a problem here. So now let's have a look at the transport level. So there need to be clear uh, uh, need to be a clear um, definition on how packets of information are transported here. So very briefly, so what you see here is that the green and the blue module is. So uh, communication can go into both directions uh, here. So towards or from the from the inbox here. So the whole thing needs uh, uh, the whole thing needs to be uh, looked at, at at the end. So we are, for our we only look at the case where uh, uh, a communication is coming into Alice. There's all, we also need authentication for security systems on the left side. I, I won't uh, talk about the details of asymmetric encryption, but I'll talk about what's possible. For one, the contract is being si signatured, signed with a private key so that people can see the data and know that our, uh, those data are from me. But there's also the uh, solution of asymmetric uh, encryption. 
that are put a lock with a public key. The lock is my public key. The data is being encrypted in a way that everybody knows that those uh, does they, that data is uh, can only be encrypt, decrypted with my private key. So this is a rough uh, explanation. For the to control this, uh, you also need to request messages. I'll talk about the, uh, what this is more in detail later. So t let's talk about the presentation. How you, can you uh, implement these these formats? The application module needs to have the possibility to uh, depict uh, formats that arrive. So you can uh, imagine that this is analogous to uh, an internet browser. You have all the functionality. It can simply be displayed. It doesn't have to be pre-installed. All of functionality can be implemented, but it's not in my own system. It's just being depicted. If data comes in, I'll check whether I can display them. The data is being depicted and I can interact with it. Uh, finally, you have this uh, interaction by a foreign uh, function module. Yes. And then we have the goal. With a foreign functionality, if that's being implemented, all the communication partner has to do is to interact. If that's being handled, then the communication is remains intact. So now I have packets flying around. We start at Bob. He has a picture. He wants to show it. He has a contact. He has the key and the address of by Alice. Now we encrypt it. The picture is being put in a packet. The key. So that's very efficient to package packets. Now we have an extra package. Uh, uh, key and we have a preview and then an extra packet is being sent with that key it's being sent the notification is directly sent the picture is only uh, being sent on request it's known by alice the message is being received if she's online She'll reach it, she'll open the package, she'll see the uh, the preview and the key that she needs. And then she needs to click it. The uh, content is being requested with the signature. Okay, I am this uh, picture, uh, this person who can see the picture. And parallel in that, to that, if the functionality is, if the interoperability is not given, then the format is being requested. Both are being sent back with the personal key that's been sent and she sees the picture. She can interact with that. It's open what it do with that. An external network can do that interaction and it goes back to Bob. Now let's talk about the, this in practice. We want to implement this into the system. The code is in the motto. Now we go into the details. It's not about just about the modules. Everybody has a separate networks. It's only important for the but also on protocol layer, it's important that the protocols are defined clearly. And in the protocol uh, layer, we have the control displayed on the bottom. It's a little bit different for the uh, individual uh, systems. And then it's about integration. 
where we want to uh, have uh, the highest number possible of systems to be interconnected. Interconnected. Um, one of the problems was the network effect. But if we connect multiple small networks, each of the networks becomes better because everybody in the network can connect with the other networks. You should not underestimate how easily scalable digital solutions are. If we have written an application once that's open source and works good, and everybody can use them, then the thing can happen really quickly. Um, with, uh, with, uh, um, so when I, so when I would look here, so so I so it, so I, I checked. Is this the end? Is it is it good already? So so uh, let's have a look at the uh, data here. So that the um, that the that the whole thing uh, exists for quite a while, but it will uh, will, will still. Uh, uh, will be a while for you. So, so I'm uh, pretty sure that the the humanity will find a way to 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 um, solve that. So let's let's talk uh, at the end why it's important to uh, to improve these things here. So one one important thing is addict, addiction to uh, to media, addiction to communication. So first of all, what is addiction here? So this is a a a, a bad behavior in the uh, reward system of the brain. So we know that the uh, the um, the the, the providers of social networks, in their design, uh, have uh, um, exploit um, reward uh, psychology here. So the the um, the um, the social media companies uh, profit from the rep rep from repetition here. So they they train their users to have an unhealthy way of act interacting already in in uh, when they're really young here. So so they um, so they really want to. A really large scale bad behavior, uh, bad uh, behavior here. So, in in my opinion, a good way of uh, solving this, a possible way of solving this, is that um, that uh, if we have an open market here, um, uh, um, um, social networks have get a reason, get a get a way to um, uh, to um, uh, respect people here. And the other thing is. Um, if people need help, then so so far they are really cut off the cut off the rest. They are still uh, they're locked into the network. But if I'm looking at a different application here, especially for that, uh, it's still not still not connected to. Uh, I'm still not connected to all my friends here, because no social networks are um, are uh, so, so, um, changed here. So. Um, so, uh, so if, uh, for example, I, I see a connection connection to my to my friends do good. Some things of this network are, are good for me. Uh, still, the all the addictive stuff will still be there. And if, if so, the second big picture uh, problem is radicalization. Uh, large networks are done for topics, not for debate culture. The problematic uh, posts are being blocked and this leads to people to sources they see that what they want to discuss uh, whether that's what they believe or not that's being blocked it's interesting where you have sources where only these this content is present uh, so that you have parallel realities through that people are, have technically uh, in separate networks and this is an effect that's on top uh, of uh, what's known as uh, as uh, the formation of blob bubbles. Now you have this effect on top of that. The solution would be interconnectivity, so that uh, it doesn't matter what uh, people believe, they can still stay in connection. Okay. I don't have a lot of time left. Um, All right. 
the uh, constructive uh, debate platforms can come into the center of a society. So maybe a debate culture is only limited to comment, uh, commenting functions of uh, newspaper sites, but people only express very strong uh, opinions. And uh, there are certain platforms where only experts talk, where the quality is pretty high, but uh, this has to be brought more into the center of society. It should simply self uh, promote self-determination so that people can decide themselves how they interact with others. What do you say? If you want to uh, communicate through poems, so that this is not separate uh, into a separate network. There's so many uh, examples of the. So now we have this graphic, the pyramid, the uh, interconnectivity should be promoted. And our society needs better online environments. We need applications so that uh, people can choose better solutions so that they don't have disadvantages. And we need some form of interconnectivity so that we have digital self-determination. So that's why I have a call for action. Please help. We start with a prototype in development. Uh, please uh, uh, just, uh, get in touch if, you, uh, uh, if you're interested. Uh, so I have this email, stefan at iconetfoundation.org. If you have if you, if you don't want to uh, take part in technical uh, details, or if you do, we need experts. If you want to support this project, uh, we need attention. We are just starting to become public. Please share this uh, talk. We want to know what other people think, how, what they think about this concept. Uh, uh, donations can help us and also use uh, already interoperable networks, share content. This is a great technology. We need to uh, have a network effect. What, what, how do we go from here? And, uh, on Wednesday, we have two sessions at two o'clock to talk about technical details and at four to talk about less technical details. As I've said, on the 26th, there's a planning meeting and a, a hackathon. And later, we are planning in Tübingen, Digital, uh, Digital Freedom Day. In November, a social network at uh, Developer Conference. Thank you for your attention and for the opportunity. I, I wish you a nice conference, Congress. We connect networks, we connect people. Thank you. Thank you for the talk for now. And we've reached a couple of questions. The first you've answered said already to the end. So, which which kind of work, which kind of papers here do you do to to make interoperability, interconnectivity available for people? So, first of all, there is our core mission here on to to develop the, uh, to develop uh, products, develop protocols uh, here. But we need to uh, we need to um, uh, wait in. We need to negotiate that. At the same time, we need the uh, the public relations work, informing the public. But at the right now, we are to, uh, our team is too small for this uh, this uh, um, the whole task of building uh, building software. So we we need to wait in. Uh, we need to find a compromise between informing, researching, and building uh, building the the technique, building the application here. So this is also why um, this is why we want, also want to make all of this uh, all of our data open source here. So next question is same same direction. Um, did you think about your concept can can be realized can be combined with the existing networks? So uh, yes. So with so uh, so closed networks. Need to some way, in some way or another, um, 
make some changes there, bring a, open some interfaces for that, uh, for that, because we don't really tap in the closed network here. So, um, so there need to be some uh, kind of open source protocols, so, uh, some open APIs uh, for that. So, so right now this is not possible in a, in a, in a, in a interconnected way, in a closed way. So if the, these networks really cut off, in, uh, they don't have anti interruptibility capabilities at all. But we'd like to make the with, a, with our prototype, prototype team, we want to start with a couple of networks and see what we can uh, done there already. So, so may, maybe just some comment to that. In detail, I'm going to chat about the individual technologies. Just uh, contact me, just, just approach me uh, with further questions here. Okay, so, okay. Um, so these were all questions that that have reached me. So, um, so let's. So thank you very much again, and we hope you're going to have lots of interactions at RC3. Yeah, thank you so much for having getting the opportunity here. So this is right at the beginning of the of the uh, of the conference. So let's check at uh, check in at our example. We still need to get this up and running. If you have any questions, uh, contact us, approach us there. And thank you again. OK, that was the talk, uh, Solving Social Network uh, Problems to Interconnectivity by Stefan. And at the channel of Carson TV, they, we are going to have the next talk at uh, uh, 16.30, Kerbal's online ex on exhibition, see you in Singapore. Thank you for your attention, also from the translation booth. You, the, just, uh, um, it was translated by Isegrim, Attilae, and Ku. If you have any feedback, uh, please use the hashtag C3Lingo on Twitter and on Mastodon. Bye.